Yeah. Okay. So if I bring it up here, you get d by dt of 1 over 2 rho v square plus rho u plus rho of potential energy. Okay? For this term, on the other hand, you have del dot something times v. I'm going to bring this term over here. Because this term, you have del dot something times v as well. You also have negative up front here and negative up front there. So it would be the common term. So after add it together, you have del dot 1 over 2 rho v square plus rho u plus rho times potential energy v. Right? From this term, add that potential energy term, you get this part. The rest will be the same. So by physical meaning, this one is accumulation term. If you look into the, the equation that we obtained, this one would be the change in energy in the whole system with respect to time. And if you look into each term here, it means that the change in kinetic, internal, and potential energy. So it is considered as accumulation term in our system. This term would be energy in three forms getting into the system by means of convection. This is conduction, energy transfer by conduction, and then this is just work. Flow work and PV, uh, flow work and work by the molecular transport. Okay? So by the meanings, these two equations should give you the same meanings but written in this different form. In the first form, you need to realize that potential energy term is somehow hindered or hindered in the work by external force. If you expand them, rearrange it, you can get the, in, the potential energy out. This is the, the second equation here is the, the equation that you are more familiar with. This equation is more consistent with thermodynamics. Okay? So in reverse, if you start by looking into thermodynamics, thermodynamics would say energy in any form would change in your system. It can be done simply by adding some energy. Energy added can be three forms of energy, kinetic potential and internal energy. Also, two forms of energy transfer, heat and work. Right? So that equation from thermodynamics, if you write it down for a small system in shear balance, you should get this one first. And then from this, if you recombine the potential energy together, you should be able to rearrange it back to external work by external force. Okay? So this is basically just a proof, proof that the equation in the textbook that consider work done by external force already incorporated term of potential energy. All right? 
up to this point, any question? Is it clear? The point for this derivation, the, the, the main point that I like to give it to you is that even though the equation in chapter 10 start by something like this, red in minus red out plus work done by flow work, oh, I'm sorry, plus work done by external work plus production should equal to zero. That term seems inconsistent with thermodynamics because it seems like potential energy is dropped out somewhere. The derivation here, just want, I just want to show you that it's not. Potential energy is already incorporated and is directly related to the term external work. Okay? That's the thing that I like to see. Now, for this part, for the following part, I'd like you to pay attention. We have learned thermodynamics, all right? We have learned, you have passed, and think you all passed thermodynamics, one. One. The second one is questionable, okay? For the first one, for thermodynamics, we start giving you the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics would be energy balance. Okay? You have energy in minus energy out equal to Q plus W in the closed system. Okay? Energy balance here already incorporated all forms of energy. We have three forms of energy. Energy here can be in three forms. Kinetic energy, potential energy, internal energy. That's three forms of energy. We also incorporated two ways of energy transfer. We have Q and W. These are two ways of energy transfer from the system without depending on mass, right? If you have closed system, the energy transfer out from the system without depending on mass transfer will be either Q or W. If you have mass going into the system and going out of the system, this mass can carry energy. There are three forms of energy that can be carried. EK, EP, and U. Okay? Inside here is considered the, if you write it down for open system, for open system, you have rate of energy in minus rate of energy out plus Q plus W equal to the change with respect to time of total energy in the system or a E system, right? E of the system is also divided into three parts. Kinetic, potential, and internal. According to first law, these three forms of energy can be um, interchanged. You can convert um, kinetic to potential, potential to internal, and so on. At the same time, if you add more mass, or if you add energy by means of mass transport, the mass can carry this form of energy. This form of energy will be added to here. It makes the whole energy of your system increase. On the other hand, if you somehow lose energy by mass, mass carry energy out, in these three forms, it gives you energy reduction in the system, right? 
That's the energy, the red letters associated with the flow of mass. On the other hand, if you have steady flow of energy going in and going out, you can also add energy by means of heat or work without depending on mass as well. These are all kinds of energy transfer available. So that means the energy balance equation like this incorporated everything. So any kind of problems, you can use this kind of equation. Okay? This one is given to you in thermodynamics or in principal calculation. Now, when you look right now, you already passed unit operation one. In unit operation one, what kind of equation you use the most often in unit operation one? Bernoulli equation. Okay? So, Bernoulli equation. What is the limitation of Bernoulli equation? Pardon? Incompressible fluid, is it necessary? Can we use Bernoulli equation with compressible fluid? Without loss. Without loss, yes. Any other restriction regarding Bernoulli equation? The most important one. No. The most important restriction of Bernoulli equation is we can use them only in isothermal system, right? In unit operation one, you never consider temperature change. In flow in pipe, in sedimentation, mixing fluidization, everything out of the system are isothermal because Bernoulli equation does not consider temperature change. There is no temperature term in Bernoulli equation. Okay? That's because Bernoulli equation consider only kinetic energy and potential energy. The Bernoulli equation is derived from energy balance under assumption that the system has no significant change in internal energy. So if you assume that delta U here, I should use in red here. If you assume that delta U is approximately zero, there is no significant change in internal energy. The rest, the change in the rest of the energy would be kinetic energy and potential energy only. You will end up with Bernoulli equation. Okay? And when you use Bernoulli equation, you cannot use it with the system containing phase change. Right? You can never use Bernoulli equation to calculate expansion or condensation like evaporation of water into vapor, you can never use Bernoulli equation. Because in such kind of scenario, internal energy is very important. If you compare magnitude of internal energy change and kinetic and potential change, if you have phase change or if you have temperature change, delta U is much, much higher than delta EK and delta EP. That's why whenever you use Bernoulli equation, you must assume temperature constant and no phase change. All right? Somehow, sometimes, Bernoulli equation is considered as mechanical energy balance. 